Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to this afternoon webinar. Let me just fix the microphone. I think that's that's much better now. Hello, Paul. Hello. It's a pleasure to have you here. Good. Good afternoon, Theo. <laughs> nice to see you. I hope you're well. I'm very well. How are you? Yeah, I'm all good. I'm good. Thank you. Good. Looking forward that's to this. Nice. So just before I pass it on to you, kindly allow me for two minutes only to say a few things about uh, the YouTube channel and the special event we're going to have tomorrow. So ladies and gentlemen, in case you haven't subscribed on the YouTube channel, please make sure you do so. I will send you the links here on the chat box. And uh, if you go to the trading spotlight, you're going to see all Paul's recording webinars. And as I always say that um, the team, myself, Paul, Jens, we put enormous amount of effort to deliver this content to you. So we are appreciate if you like the videos as well, because we believe we bring so much value to your uh, trading and investing activity. And uh, what we have, what we launch here at Admirals is the market talk in 2023 i will personally interview uh 12 famous traders among the trading community starting from tomorrow will be the first one uh anna cooling we want to start with a lady she's experienced in volume trading and volume analysis and uh, it's something really nobody wants to miss it's going to just be for one hour and it's exclusively for our uh, clients only for you guys i will share the link so you can register i believe most of you already registered but just in case also you're going to be registered uh, automatically for the following events after on um on february the 23rd i will have the privilege and honor to interview steve nisson the candlestick uh, guru i will uh, call him if uh, paul agrees as well it's yep. the gentleman who introduced to us the candlestick patterns i also have his books here i wrote i i read his books so many times i'm still reading them because there is enormous amount of value in the books and um again that's going to be one time only okay and then we're going to have david cooling about uh quantum trading that's going to be in march so for now we focus for tomorrow with anna at uh, 6 p.m gmt time please make sure you register yourself and trust me this is going to be uh, a unique webinar so without saying more paul i will uh Pass you on the clicker here. Just give me one second to find it. Yep. Okay, Excellent. Paul, I think you can take over from now. Excellent. Thank you, Theo. I'll bring up Thank my you so uh, much. slide. Hopefully everybody can see. Just bring that up there. Excellent. Thank you, uh, Theo. Okay. Thank you for the introduction. And uh, I, can, uh, I can recommend to tomorrow's session. Um, I've known uh, Anna Cooling for many years. She's a very, very uh, great woman and also you know, really solid and uh, um, very professional, very uh, capable trader. So I can uh, heartily recommend sort of uh, um, tapping into that session there that Theo will be running with Anna. To, it's plenty there to uh, to learn. Uh, but in the meantime today, uh, here we are for our uh, session 17 of our price action trading guide. We're here with me, Paul. Uh, and session 17 today is all going to be about combining price action setups. That's what we're going to be uh, talking about. We've covered quite a few of those in our session so far. Today's session is about what happens when you put a couple of them together. Do they uh, Are they valid? Where do we see them? How can we utilize them? That's what we'll be uh, sort of looking at talking about um, today. Um, it would be great to know for those of you who are joining us for our session today, you know, uh, how many of you are, A, are using price action and B, how many of you are aware of how to combine price action setups? Um, maybe you are completely new to trading and, you know, you're not really understanding. That's OK. That's what these sessions are here for. Uh, it'll be changed by the end of it. But alternatively, maybe it's something you already uh, utilize and it'd be great to hear what your own personal experience um, has been. So um, uh, as always, you know, this uh, session will be, uh, we'll see the session on the uh, here today, joining live. If you've got questions, you can put that into the chat box 
Um, or alternatively, okay, if you're watching this on demand on the Admiral's YouTube channel, you can put comments in there, you can put car, uh, thoughts there. You'll also find at the end of this session, those of you who joined us today, there's a little feedback form. We'd really appreciate if you just take 30 seconds to, uh, to fill that uh, fill that out. Uh, and as I said, if you've got questions or comments, put them in the chat box or in the comment box uh, on YouTube, uh, and we'll be happy to sort of uh, help guide you with those. So, of course, here we are, Admirals, a, a global forex and CFD broker with uh, uh, local support, licensed and regulated across a, a wide range of regulatory environments, providing competitive spreads on the most popular trading products and allowing you to engage with markets utilizing both the MT4, MT5 and also Admiral Supreme platform. If you've got any questions about Admirals, please get in touch with your account representative uh, and they'll be very happy to help guide you. So what we're going to talk about today, not unsurprisingly, we're going to talk a little bit about what is price action trading. That's what this uh, whole Wednesday afternoon series is about, is about uh, basically helping lift, raise, you know, and uh, enable you in terms of understanding price action trading and how you can utilize it in your own endeavors. Um, we'll talk a bit about how you understand the importance of being able to combine price action trading tactics. That allows you to build a more comprehensive trading plan also give you the opportunity to identify possible better setups, probably better sort of stronger uh, uh, entry, stronger trade setups that uh, that will uh, show for you, uh, which is, you know, really we're about in order to increase your trading opportunities. And then if there's a time at the end, we'll take a look at live markets. So. Um, as I said, I appreciate that uh, you know here at Admirals we have a, a broad range of experience of people who join us for our sessions, from complete beginners to uh, uh, advanced traders. Um, you're all very welcome. There's all something here for for everyone. Uh, we also appreciate that you know these are the sort of you know English speaking webinars, but we are going to a completely global audience. So uh, wherever you are in the world, thank you for joining us. It's great to have you here. We hope these sessions will be uh, help you in your. Uh, own trading uh, endeavors and your trading journey uh, and we look forward to sort of sharing our experiences with you over the uh, over these next few sessions so for those who don't know me uh, my name is paul i've traded for many years traded for funds traded for clients primarily i like to trade fx indices and commodities that's where my folks would be um, i tend to be a trend trader for sort of longer term swing and position trades and i tend to be a reversal trader for sort of shorter uh, aggressive intraday uh, trading elements of which will come into our uh, session today okay and then i'll uh, sort of share some of my own experiences so um, you know we're looking to continue our uh, series based on helping traders understand and utilize price action in their trading right it's easy for beginner traders to sometimes be a little bit intimidated a little bit overwhelmed just looking at you know the the huge amount of data that are out there in terms of being able to help them analyze markets um, however, with a little bit of education, a little bit of understanding of candlesticks and price action, all right, it allows you to become a, a simpler version of analysing and understanding markets. So each Wednesday, just build upon the previous session so that you're more educated and informed how to use price action in your trading, you know, and actually share with you a few ideas and thoughts and sort of uh, elements that will be useful to you uh, and things you might just want to have a look at in terms of your own price action trading. So for those of you joining us for the first time, um, we talk about why is price action trading. It is simply just a basic means of market analysis using price movement over time, right? It is popular with both retail and institutional traders, and it's that analyzing changes in price over time that is the, uh, the action. Now, um, typically, more of our focus will be on sort of price action over the last three to six months, right? But also respecting longer term price movements and shorter time action. Um, and the reason being, as I say every week, is that we appreciate that the majority of people watching uh, our sessions here, you know, you're probably sort of trading around a day job, you're trading around other commitments, you're not sort of, you know, doing it all day, every day. And so you might be looking to trade sort of longer term end of day charts or maybe weekly charts, four hourly charts, et cetera. Uh, you know, and that's where your focus will be. And that's what we'll look to focus on as well. But what I would say about price action is that, you know, regardless of what assets you like to focus on trading, whether it be FX or equities, indices, commodities, fixed income, crypto, etc., or what other timeframes, whether you're a short term aggressive, you know, one and five minute trader or you like to trade, you know, much longer sort of daily, weekly, monthly charts. 
price action works across all time frames and across all instruments. Okay, and it's it's like learning a language. All right, in the summer you might be learning French or German or Spanish or what have you. It's about learning a language, uh, and like any uh, language, okay, you know it's more about practice. The more you practice it, the better you become until you practice so much that it becomes almost like an automatic response that it clicks okay and it's the same with price action the more you practice using price action and reading it seeing it and utilizing it and how you uh you know analyze markets and look to identify trade setups well then you know the quicker it becomes just like second nature to and then once it is there once you've got that kind of cognitive recognition ability well then you know it doesn't really matter what time frame or what instrument you look at you'll be able to read the chart and you'll be able to identify where there might be possible opportunities for you so you know we've covered quite a lot so far in our sessions covered a, a good deal right and and i say this uh, every week is that what I'm trying to do is a mixture of both, you know, sort of maybe what we'd call the hard skills, which is identifying particular, you know, setups, particular trading tactics, particular trading um, triggers. Uh, and also, let's say the softer skills, which is really about, you know, sort of becoming a better trader, building a trading business, all right, you know, uh, and sort of evolving into your next level as a trader. So in terms of the hard skills, we've looked at things like engulfing candles, star formations, key reversals, pin bars, inside bars, all right? Things like that, okay? Fault breakouts, which is what we did last week. They're what maybe people might call the sort of the hard skills in terms of, you know, that's the setup people always love to look at a setup and see how they can utilize it in their uh, trading. But there's also the, the sort of the softer side, as I said, about stuff like preparing for the opportunity, okay? Making sure that, you know, you understand the importance of having routines and checklists, about importance of managing risk, right, as a, as a new trader, about sort of, you know, working and underlying, having a plan for your trading, okay, for 2023. So, you know, we've we've covered a lot, as I said, of both the hard and the soft. And uh, the great thing about that is all of those sessions have been recorded. All of those sessions are on the Admiral's YouTube channel. So be sure to check them out and have a look and you'll find that they basically, you know, they're, they're all there. So, you know, if you've been through a few of them, or you need a little bit of a, a reminder, go through, view them again. OK, certainly for ones like, let's say, the harder skills, you know, you might want to go through and just with a pen and a paper and take a few uh, notes right, just to help you uh, um, sort of, let's say, cement the learning in that we, we touched on. And today we're going to talk about combining price action setups. All right. What does that uh, what does that mean? You might be saying, well, stick around, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll uh, we'll talk about it in a moment. Now, if you remember a few uh, weeks ago, we talked about, you know, we're going to start putting in a plan to place. All right. You know, what is our plan for how we look to effectively operate and trade? All right. And I uh, talked about how. You know, we want to just a simple trading plan, just a very simple trading plan that it can be the basis of how we operate. And, uh, you know, for new traders, new traders, this can help, right, because it just gets you doing the right things at the right time. And what we talked about was, you know, step one is, you know, whenever you open a chart, okay, and regardless of what time frame you think you trade or like to focus on, we define levels of support and resistance on our chart. Start the monthly, go down to the weekly, down to the daily draw in those levels of support and resistance, right? We do not want to be selling into support or buying into resistance, right? And as I said, it doesn't matter whether you're a monthly chart trader or a five-minute chart trader. You want to know where those big major levels of support and resistance, might be horizontal levels of support resistance, might be a, a trend line, okay? Or it might be something like a big round number, but equally also you've got support and resistance in terms of moving support and resistance from uh, moving averages. Step two is then, well, you know, we can look at, is there a trend? Is there a trend in place? And you hear me say this every week, good trends will leap off the chart at you. Good trends do not need to be forced, okay? If you find yourself trying to sort of, you know, turn in the chart on its side, trying to do anything you possibly can to sort of just convince yourself that there is a trend on that chart, well, the likelihood is there is no trend there, all right? Good trends leap off the chart at you. The challenge we have is that is that instruments really only trend for about 20 to 30% of the time. That's the thing, all right? So the vast majority of the time, markets are either consolidating or they're transitioning. And if they're doing that, well, then move along. All right, just move along and find a chart, go through, you know, the, the lists we've talked about, go through and find out, you know, a, an instrument that is trend, because there will be one, and that's what we're looking for. Because if there is a trend, what we're looking to see is, you know, step three, all right? Wait to see how price reacts at 
key support and resistance levels all right that's what we're looking for remember if there is a trend ideally in a trend we want to be buying pullbacks and you know we want to be selling on rallies in a downtrend that's what we're looking to do that's what we're looking to identify we're looking at those areas as ways and means the places to to basically where we can do our business so those key support resistance levels might be a horizontal level withdrawn in, might be a big round number that's there, might actually just be a uh, uh, you know a dynamic level of support resistance from a moving average. They can they can all be there, because what we're looking for is once we've identified those areas, is step four: are there any particular price action triggers at those areas that we can utilize? So some of those price action triggers we've talked about things like engulfing candles pin bars inside bars star formations key reversals simple price action triggers that we utilize in the form of our overall plan we also want to look at is it part of a bigger chart pattern okay sometimes you know you might see a, a trigger at a particular level but it could be part of a bigger chart pattern something like you know maybe a flag pattern or or a triangle or a pennant if it's a continuation pattern or something like maybe a double top or double bottom, triple top, triple bottom, okay, in terms of if it's a reversal pattern. And we'll do a future session just on continuation patterns and reversal patterns and how they look in price action terms, all right? But what we wanted to do is, you know, develop 10 steps and have the first five steps of that, you know, that's what you do. Whenever you open a chart, this is what you do, because actually it's about doing something simple and consistently well. That is what helps traders progress. It's, it's not about you trying to find the, the rock star trade, okay? The, the ultimate trade. Don't need that. It's actually just about following a simple routine, which we talked about in one of the earlier sessions, having simple routines based on a checklist that just allow you just to basically be doing the right things day after day after day after day. And that is what puts you in the place to, to pick up the best trading um, opportunities. So we'll build more of that as we go through and we'll talk more about it in our in our sessions. But remember, that's what we said. You know, if we're going to trade price action, we want to have a very simple price action trading guide that we can follow. So, uh, as I said, in uh, in your previous sessions, we have covered quite a few of those hard skills around. We've covered a lot of price action uh, in order to build your own trading plan. Right? And we've we've shared numerous price action setups that provide very simple very clear entry opportunity. So things like pin bars, engulfing candles, inside bars, uh, key reversals, star formations, etc. So today, what we'll do is we'll go a little step further and talk about the power of combining these price action tactics. Okay, How can we utilize these tactics to, to enhance our trading plan? That's what we're that's what we're particularly looking at. All right. What can we what can we take and utilize? OK, from our own experience that can actually help us in identifying, you know, better possible trading opportunities. Because all traders want to do that. You know, we're all interested in uh, identifying better trading uh, op setups, okay? Um, you know, that never leaves you. It doesn't matter how long you've been trading for, okay? All traders are interested in, in that. It's just the nature of the uh, it's just the nature of the game. So, you know, as I said, you know, once we've um, been going through our uh, our price action trading plan. You know, we need some triggers, okay, and sort of step four, and we've, and we said we've previously covered inside bars, golf and candles, outside bars, pin bars, key reversals, and also star formations. And as I say, all of those videos um, are in the Admiral's YouTube channel. You'll find them on the Facebook page. So if you're joining us for the first time, you've not seen that before, you'll find all of those there, as my colleague Thea was showing you there. They're all on the website, all on the uh, YouTube channel. So be sure to go in and look at them, all right, and just... Uh, take them on board. As I said, there's lots of the fabulous content in there that you can utilize to help you with your own trading. Uh, and as I said, if you want to go back, recap some of those price action triggers, well, then you can. I'll go over them very quickly here. But as I said, if you really want to dig into them, go back and watch the videos, all right, on the uh, YouTube channel. So uh, we had a look at uh, an inside bar, right? When we covered that, What's an inside bar? Remember, just as a uh, very quick reminder for you, let's bring up the old drawing tool here, right? An inside bar is, as the name implies, okay, all right, the, the, the candlestick, the bar, all right, that it's formed needs to be completely within, all right, the range of the preceding 
candle, okay? And it has to be the, the full candle, okay? The full candle. Sometimes people just think that it just they just need the body to be inside the previous candle, but no, it's not. There needs to be the full range, okay? You know, from the, the high to the low needs to be within the range of the preceding candle. Sometimes you'll find that preceding candle, you'll hear traders talk about it as maybe as the mother bar or maybe the kangaroo bar, okay? Because they, this looks like, you know, a little baby kangaroo, all right? So sort of sat in the, the mother's uh, pouch, you know? Um, you know, as I say, I, I don't particularly, I don't particularly care too much how you wish to label it, all right? How you, what you wish to call it, you know? Um, some of the, you know, the Japanese were talking about Steve Neeson, you know, the, the uh, Japanese uh, candlesticks, you know, Harami, that's about how they would pronounce the sort of inside bar. However you particularly label it or what you particularly wish to name it, that's okay. The important thing is, is that you can recognize the pattern. That's the important thing, all right, that you can A, recognize it. And importantly, I think for this one, which you'll hear me talk about before, is that think about what has actually occurred. Trying to dig a bit deeper, have a little look at the underlying layers within that, effectively that, um, within that kind of candlestick setup, what has actually happened. And so when it comes to an inside bar, what we're expecting is, is that, you know, the market has, the market, oops, the market has been on a bit of a surge, okay, market then rests, right, like human beings, as human beings, we tend to surge, we rest, and then we surge again. And what we're looking for, okay, of course, is that the inside bar is kind of like the rest before the next surge. And so we're utilizing that as, as a bit of a heads up, all right? Heads up, the market surged, it's rest. It's probably getting ready to surge again. So what we need to do is we need to be able to sort of, you know, identify that and, and work with that, okay? So, you know, the IB is the rest. And as traders, we're looking to catch the next surge, all right? So as I said, you know, I want you to, you know, you be able to identify it inside bars, but I want you to go a bit deeper. I want you to think and understand what has occurred there to for, for this pattern to form, right? What am I looking for? Market surged, it's rested, getting ready to surge again. That's what, that's what we're particularly looking for, okay? That's what we're interested in. So um, we quickly, uh, you know, a few just examples of inside bars. Remember what I said earlier, the others are pretty explanatory, is, is that some people would see this one here at the end as an inside bar because the body of the candle is within the range of the uh, preceding bar. Now, personally, I do not count that, okay? I don't count that. You can see the wick of it. The wick of it went higher than the, the, the sort of high of the preceding candle. So for me, that is not an inside bar, right? The bar has to be inside the one before okay it has to be right that is what forms as an inside bar okay that's it if it's outside of it it is not an inside bar okay so it's, you know um for many traders that's one of the reasons they like inside bars is because it, it's it's very clear it's either there or it's not there is no ambiguity there's no kind of humming and hawing about it is that a setup is that well it either is either there as an inside bar or it is not an inside bar and that makes it sometimes for some traders very simple because it's it's kind of black and white, almost like it is on the chart there. So that was inside bars. Uh, then we had, you know, we've covered the outside bar or the engulfing candle. You know, kind of as the name implies, it's the opposite of an inside bar. All right, an inside bar, which is all about, you know, being smaller than the bar preceding it. An outside bar, an engulfing candle, all right, okay, is all about the candle being completely sort of, you know, uh, wrapping around the, the candle previously. Uh, and once again, must include the complete engulfment of the entire range of the previous bar, uh, not just the body. Sometimes people sort of just trade it off the sort of the body, saying that you know, it's bigger than the, the body. It's not. It needs to be the full range, okay, the, the high and the low. That's that's the way we look uh, at it. Um. The thing I will say about engulfing candles is that they, they do not happen as frequently as we would like. Okay, they're certainly not as uh, ubiquitous as, let's say, you know, pin bar rejection candles are. They happen infrequently, but they are a strong signal, right, when they do occur, especially, especially when they occur as part of a confluence of events. Remember what I've always said about candlestick patterns. Candlestick patterns, by their very nature, are a reversal pattern. All right, there are a reversal pattern. So there needs to be something for it to reverse. Okay, so, you know, in this case, we want to see price having traded up, 
before it puts in a bearish engulfing candle. I want a bearish engulfing candle at the end of an uptrend to give me the idea that the higher probability move is to the downside. Uh, and on the flip of that, okay, you know, uh, when price has been moving in a downtrend is when I want to see a bullish engulfing candle at the end of a downtrend because it's given me an indication that the higher probability move is to the upside. And so if, you know, if you're a little bit confused, you know, what you're looking for is that, you know, when it comes to engulfing candles, you want to be trading in the direction of the close. But with that, you know, as I said, you know, we want a bearish engulfing pattern at the end of an uptrend, a bullish engulfing at the end of a downtrend. So as I said, they don't happen as often as we'd like, but what we're looking for is that, you know, when we see them as part of a confluence events, that's what makes us happy. So um, just as I was uh, saying earlier, you know, I, I personally, when I see engulfing candles, not only does it have to completely engulf the range, but I do like to see a strong body as well. All right? I do like to see a strong body on there. That gives me, uh, you know, a, kind of a clearer hint that what we've seen is, we've seen is in this particular case where we've got bullish, bullish engulfing, okay, is that, you know, price which has been in a downtrend, the bulls have stepped in and they have wrestled control, all right, of that market. They are in control now. That's what I want to know. That's what gives me confidence. They are in control of the market. And so the higher probability is that price will move to the upside. And that's what we're looking for, all right? That's what we're looking for, all right? So, you know, it needs to engulf the entire range. I want to see a strong body, okay? And, uh, you know, um, uh, ideally a bullish engulfing happens at the end of a downtrend a bearish one happens at the end of an uptrend, okay? Remember, all candlestick patterns are in their name, you know, in their, uh, you know, in their makeup, they are ideally reversal patterns in themselves. And that's what, um, that's what that's, you know, that's what that's all about. So we've done inside bars, did uh, outside bars and golfing candles. Then we have pin bars, okay? Rejection candle, uh, you know, a, a very popular trading trigger. Um, it, happen all over the place very ubiquitous okay compared to an engulfing candle which doesn't happen very often you'll find pin bars happen a great deal on charts some people you'll find them you know they'll you'll hear them they are called uh, pin bars okay some people will call them high test or low test you might have heard it being called a rejection candle or a, a hammer or a shooting star once again i'm not i'm not too fussed how you wish to label it what i am worried about or concerned is that you understand what has occurred, right? What has had to occur to set up that candlestick? That's why, you know, you just, I want you to think a little bit deeper what has gone on in the market that it has printed that rejection candle, okay? Because if you can understand that, that is, remember what I was saying earlier, is that price action is just like learning a language. And if you can understand that, it just helps you understand the language at a deeper level. The, the better able you are to do that, the quicker you can read and the quicker you can become more effective as a trader. So a good pin bar. All right, it should have the open and close within the range of the previous bar, which is what we'll look at on an example. In an ideal world, we want the candle wick, okay, the wick here to be two to three times the body, which should be a small body and it should be at the ends of the uh, of the candle. So giving us a long nose, all right, that protrudes from other bars and candlesticks. And I said, good pen bars, they stick out and they are very obvious. Remember what I was saying is that, you know, is that a candlestick is a reversal pattern. So here we've had a bullish close. Okay. What I want, you know, I want to see that at the end of a downtrend. All right. Or here where we've had, you know, this is, you know, it's a, it's a bearish rejection candle. This is, you know, is what I want to see have happened at the end of an uptrend because price has basically opened here. Price has pushed all the way up during that session. And then for whatever reason, the bears have stepped in, they've taken control, they've pushed price all the way down, they've pushed price all the way down past the open, and it's closed right on its lows there. It's price closed at the end of the session, right on its lows. That is telling me that, you know, who's in control of this? Well, the bears are in control. And so the, the, the probability is that, you know, we're more likely to move downwards, okay, over the next few sessions. That's what I'll, that's what we're using pin bars and rejection candles for. Okay, that's uh, that's the that's the way we like to to see them operate. So as a, you will find they happen a great deal, all right? But it's a it's a case of you know as always, it's the context and it is preferably that confluence of 
uh, confluence of events, all right? Two, three, four things coming together at the same time and place that gives me an indication that there's a, you know, there's a, there is a better likelihood of a trade to occur uh, in, in one particular direction over another. It does not a guarantee. There is no guarantees in trading. It's not a perfect setup. There is no perfection in trading, but it's about giving us an indication of a higher probability that price is more likely to move one way over another. Yeah, and, and so those are just you know nice examples of uh, of pin bars there. Okay, as I said, they should you know here they should all be at the end of a downtrend. Okay, the end of a downtrend, right? Or, or oppose here at the end of an uptrend. Okay, the end of an uptrend, and as you can see, you know there's small body, big nose, very clear, very sticks out. You know, it's very very clear and very obvious, and that's actually you know that's what we want to see, all right, from our uh, from our pin bars. So, you know, I just went through a quick one of the, let's say the three ones they see the most, pin bars, engulfing candles, inside bars. But remember, we also covered key reversals and we've also covered star formations as well, right? And remember, those videos are available, right? They will be on the Admiral's YouTube channel, so be sure to check that out. So, yeah, as it says there, we've covered lots of price action trading tactics in previous webinars. However, they become even more powerful when they become combined, all right? And what does that actually mean? Is when, when we see combinations of inside bars, pin bars, engulfing candles, and key reversals, when they start seeing them coming together, that is when we have very strong setups, okay? And you know, the, the, the challenge you'll have is that they don't happen as often as you would like, okay? They never happen as often as you like, you know, they're, they're quite rare, but with that, all right, when you do see and recognize them, they are worth actually, you know, exploring as a possible trade, um, as possible trade setup. Even just looking at this chart here at the, uh, you know, having price moved its way down. Well, what we have here is, you know, that is an engulfing candle, which is also a, uh, a key reversal candle, uh, followed by an inside bar, you know, which is a pin bar, followed by another, you know, inside bar, which is a pin bar. So we've got, you know, an engulfing candle, an inside bar, and a pin bar. Right, you've got three candles there, giving us an indication that well, you know, there's clearly there is a, there is support here. All right, there is support, and as you can see for yourself, Bosch price reverses and heads off at a, at a you know at a in a very strong new bullish trend, and that's what we're looking to see when we're looking to combine price action trading tactics. I wish they always set up like that. Unfortunately, they don't. Okay, as I said, they, they are because you're getting combinations. They are rarer than we would like them to be. But when we see good combinations, it is most definitely as worth us, you know, sort of taking the effort to watch them. Uh, and you know, and if it if it's suitable, trade them when uh, when yeah when they are available to us. So if we look at it in a simpler way, what we've got is sometimes these combos, they will appear in, a, in a, 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 you know, a one candle, which is not really a combination, but two candles, okay, and three plus candle setups, all right? So, you know, one candles is, is, is what we've just looked at there, really, engulfing candle, inside bar, all right, a pin bar, et cetera. Two and three candles is where, the, as the name implies, there's two or three candles coming together that give us that combination, and that's what actually helps us, all right? That's what helps us identify good combined price action trading tactics. So what I would say is that, you know, a one candle combination, okay, is actually is where you have multiple triggers all in one candle. What what does that mean, Paul? What, you know, what, are, you, what are you talking about there, okay? This is where very often the, the clearest uh, view of it is it's where a pin bar, a rejection candle, it may also have printed in such a way that it is also an engulfing candle and a key reversal candle. It's a very simple, very powerful, but unfortunately not as frequent as we would like setup. So here's an example here. This, this is a weekly chart of the DAX. Okay, as I said, it's all across all sorts of time frames. That's just what I'm looking at is I'm interested. In, we can see that this price has been been an uptrend, hasn't it? Okay, here's the 50 period moving average, the red. And then what actually happens here, price pulls back to the 50, does actually put in a little pin bar here. But then the next week, what we print here is this big bullish candle. All right, that big bullish candle is, it's a pin bar. Okay, all right, it's a pin bar rejection candle. It also happens to be an engulfing candle because it engulfs the preceding, in fact, it engulfs the, the preceding two candles. It is also a key reversal candle as well because prices come down during that session price pushed to a new low it pushed beyond the previous low 
the price reversed, okay, carried on up and closed. And that's the important thing. Let's just clear these drawings and make it a little clearer for you. It's closed higher than the preceding, the high of the preceding candle. That is what makes it a key reverse, a push to a low, and then closes higher. So what you've got in, in that one candle, you've got a combination of a pin bar, an engulfing candle, and a key reversal, all right? And as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, all right, once you trade just the break, okay, the price breaking out of the uh, of that candle with your stop loss underneath, well, actually what we can see is the price went up, and that's a weekly candle, so price went up there for months, all right? Price went for months off that, okay? So, you know, as I said, they never happen as often as we would like, but when they do happen, when you get a one candle combo, they're definitely worth taking on board. They're definitely worth, you know, sort of having a trade. As I said, this was already in an uptrend and price had already come back down and, and uh, was basically getting supported at the 50 period moving average. So once again, it's that confluence of events. You've got two, three, four things all coming together, one time and place. That's your trade. Okay. Nice and simple, ladies and gentlemen. So. That was a one candle combo where you might see just all combinations in one candlestick. A two candle combo, as the name implies, is that where you've got two candles combining together to provide you with a trigger. And I, I suppose the, the most popular one I see is where we get uh, an inside bar and a pin bar together. Right? You'll get a uh, you know you'll get a reversal with you know with a pin bar. Okay, when it follows an inside bar, or alternatively, we get an inside bar followed by a pin bar. Okay, uh, and you know, there's an example here just on this one. Let's bring up the old drawing tool here. Pr oops. Price has uh, price has come up to this level of resistance where we can see, uh, and as price has come up, you know, we can see we've been in quite a, quite a trend, haven't we? Then what happens is price prints an inside bar. Okay, you know, the the, the candle proceed it. And then is the next candle after it is a bearish pin bar, okay? Which is what we want to see after uh, you know a long uptrend. So we've got a two candle combo that we've got an inside bar, which is then followed by Bosch, a pin bar, okay? And it's a bearish pin bar, which is given as an indication that that you know at this level of resistance, okay, having broken this previous high as well, price is about to reverse, okay? Price, you know, it's 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 surged resting and now it's about to surge again and we can see that basically price drops and it drops quite significantly there from that area so there's a nice combination there okay of two candle combo inside bar and pin bar it might be different okay you know it might be, it can be a little bit different okay but as a general rule that's when we see the uh the most right and and you'll find some people um I, you know i know some people who just literally trade uh who literally will just trade this setup right just trading the setup of an inside bar followed by a pin bar rejection candle that's it that's all they look to trade you know it doesn't happen as often as we'd like but when it does invariably it's normally a particularly good setup all right it's uh it's again you know the trade the trade is it's surged it's now resting and then it's getting ready to surge again and you're looking to put yourself in a position to take advantage of that uh, and then finally a three candle combo which is very rare but as the name implies where you have three or more candles combining together to provide a suitable trigger it might be part of a bigger chart pattern, all right, as says there. It doesn't happen very often, but when it does, they are powerful, okay? They're powerful and they are worth trading. So um, we had a little look at this earlier, didn't we? You know, price has been in a downtrend price here, prints, you know. That is a one candle combo in itself because not only is it an engulfing candle, but it's also a key reversal candle price is pushed to a new low, but closes above the higher the preceding candle. The next candle is, uh, you know, a one candle come as well because it's in, it's a rejection candle, but it is also an inside bar. It's inside the range of the preceding candle. And then the next candle is, you know, it's a rejection candle. It's a pin bar. Remember, as I said, it could also be part of a bigger chart pattern because actually that is also, as I just drew it, that is also a double bottom, which is a reversal pattern. So once again, remember what I was saying, confluence of events, two, three, four things all coming together, one time and place. That's your trade, okay? That is your trade. Keep it, keep it nice and simple. Don't we don't need to overcomplicate things. That's part of the joy of price action trading is that you know we can identify our levels, areas where we think markets are going to have to make a decision. And what we're looking at is well, okay. Here we can see you know that there was two, three, four things all coming together, one time and place. The trade is on. 
So um, I've just got a few examples here, okay? So let's say uh, the old drawing tool, Bosch. So, you know, uh, this is a weekly chart, okay? That is just a one candle, all right, okay? Price has rallied up, it's hit a pin bar at a significant level, big round number, and price has dropped all its way down. But look what happens when it gets down to the big round number at 1200. Big round number at 1200, okay? What we see is, you know, we've had a downtrend. What do we get? We get an inside bar, okay? an inside bar, okay, in itself, that would be, be of interest to us, but then the next candle, what is the next candle? Next candle is, in its way, one candle combo, because it is a rejection candle, it's an engulfing candle, it's also a key reversal candle, and it's a two candle combo, because we've effectively got, basically, we've got you know, the inside bar, followed by this rejection pin bar, and we can see for ourselves, that actually price rallies its way up strongly, doesn't it? Uh, and then there's just a one candle reversal. That is an engulfing candle, okay? Before, you know, that's, you know, if once the traders worked their way up, that's, you know, an idea that that trend getting up towards 1400 is over. And then what you can see is the price actually drifts its way there. So as I said, you know, that is a great setup. It doesn't happen as often as we would like, but when you're getting, you know, one, two, three, four things all happening at one time and place, okay? Big round number. It is most definitely worth you, you know, having a look at that. You know, that's the that's the trade we want to be uh, that's the trade we want to be on board um this is one on uh the the dow here i'm just trying to show different time frames different examples okay you know uh namely that uh at the start of it price have been rallying up what happens is well price actually puts in an inside bar uh you know this is another weekly chart and then what does it do and then it basically the next candle is a bush next candle is a rejection candle it's a pin bar so you've got a two candle combo there Two candle combo, and what happens is price falls all the way down. But you know, when we look a little bit later, what we can see is you know, price had hit those highs and it kind of drifted its way down. And what we had was we had you know a kind of inside bar, an inside bar pin bar, followed by a basically a bullish engulfing candle. Okay, and you know, the, it's a bit scruffy this price action is chart, but you know, I'm showing you that because well, you know, as much as we love to see clean, simple price action charts. Any of you who have traded price action or any markets will know that sometimes it's not always pretty, okay? Sometimes it can be scruffy and it's about being able to recognize and understand what you're seeing with that. So in that particular case, that's what we see there, okay? You know, the two candle combo there and another two candle combo uh, there on its, uh, it itself as well. Uh, yeah, and as I said, just another couple of uh, scruffy examples here, okay, just to sort of, you know, show that, you know, they show up everywhere, they show what they do, you know, it's about just being able to recognise, okay, once you practice, okay, practice, 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 you start to recognise them, you know, much, much uh, uh, quicker and easier, and this is this is euro against sterling, once again, it's the weekly chart, you can tell that I like trading weekly charts, and what we had was, you know, price came up to a big round number here, big nine zero, right, nine treble zeros, and then what we had was, we had a rejection candle pin bar there, followed by an inside candle, another candle which was another smaller, you know, still inside the the first candle, followed by a final candle which is you know a big rejection candle, engulfing candle, key reversal candle. Okay, so that is you know that big candle is a one candle combo itself, as also as well as a you know there's a two candle combo there. Okay, in terms of inside candles, pin bars, and rejection candles before price collapsed all the way down from there. So as I said, they don't happen as often as we'd like, ladies and gentlemen, but when they do, you wanna sit up and take notice of them, okay? Sit up, take notice and work with them. Um, just a couple of examples, all the examples here on, you know, this is a you know, Bitcoin, okay? You know, just from uh, the old days and stuff, just to show that it doesn't really matter what instrument is. Price action works across all instruments and also increasingly it shows on, uh, um, you know, all asset classes here. You know, this these are the days, OK, when price uh, uh, Bitcoin had been a run up, it pulled back to the 20 period moving average. It puts in a one candle combo in that it is a bullish engulfing candle is also a bullish key reversal candle price pushed to the low closes above the high the next candle is also an inside candle pin bar just giving us information or confirmation that there's bullish pressure price you know shoots up there for the next six weeks comes back down again puts in a pin bar which is bounced off you know the uh, big round number 
followed by a small inside bar, and then price basically puts in a bullish bar. So you have in these cases a two candle combo, which becomes a very sort of scruffy three candle star formation, which is what we've covered as well. So just to say lots, just different examples, just to show, you know, um, different time frames, different instruments, you know, once you recognize price action, you can start to see, well, then you're, then you're actually able to, uh, to, to work with it and, and uh, trade with it, okay? Um, so you know, I've got an example here. This is four hour chart, Kiwi against the uh, Japanese yen. You can see it's been in a lovely uptrend, okay? And there'll be lots of opportunities for traders to just trade normally, but we're looking for combos here. Here, price pulls it down, okay? Puts in a rejection candle there, okay? Followed by an inside bar pin bar. Uh, there's a question mark on there because I, I wouldn't have been trading that because that is the last candle of the week. Okay, last candle of the week. And, you know, don't I'm not putting on position to hold over the weekend, but the price action was valid, and we see the price actually popped up and ran. Okay, for the part of the week, it comes back down to the 20 period moving average. So we're getting confluence of events. We're getting a little inside bar. Okay, followed by a one candle combo which is basically it's a pin bar which is an engulfing candle which is also a key reversal candle before price shoots its uh, way up here price comes falls down a little bit okay puts in another a little one this one would probably probably have failed you'd have been uh, stopped out on that there's no no perfection okay no perfection in trading but then what happens is price pulls back to the 50 pair moving average here and then puts in what we get is a, a bullish pin bar followed by an inside bar bullish pin bar there okay the price starts to move up from there okay you know it's it's as i said no, there's no perfection nothing works every time but what i have found is that when combos fail you might just want to watch for the next few candles because it might just be getting ready to set up again okay there's nothing wrong uh, nothing wrong in that, that at all uh kiwi yen here okay is on the weekly chart you can tell uh, you know i love trading weekly charts um, and what we'll have here is a Kiwi yen, okay? Price is moving its way down, it's beneath its averages, it pulls back up. And then what we get here is we get, you know, an inside bar, which is also a pin bar, but then we also get the next week is a, it's a, like a one candle combo lined up with the inside bar. You know, that is a, it's a rejection candle off the 200 period moving average. It's a, it's an engulfing candle. It's a key reversal candle, as well as an inside bar and pin bar double combo before price drops down. Okay, for the next well two months. All right. So, you know, the one of the great things about you know looking at these and trading them on weekly charts is that. You know, you can do a little bit of analysis at the weekend, see them setting up. You're not there having to watch every tick and prepare yourself, you know, uh, do your position sizing, work out your entry, work out stop loss, work out how you want to win the trade uh, and work with it that way. So a couple of final points. We've overran a little bit, but, you know, there's lots to cover and push in here is that there's a little bit of homework for you for this week. So go through some of your favorite charts, go through some of your favorite charts and your favorite instruments and identify possible price action combinations. Just take yourself away, give yourself a couple of hours, go through it. All right? How often did they occur? Sadly, they never occur as much as we'd like, all right? But did they occur? More importantly, where did they occur? Did they occur at things like levels of support resistance at big round numbers? Because if it did, well, then the question is, did it provide you with a good trading opportunity? Okay, it might be something just to take on board and look in just a very simple way to sort of engage with markets using price action combinations. So, ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, price action analysis is a way of analyzing markets using purely price action. You're looking for price action triggers at significant price levels, prices, or zones. It allows us to build a very simple price action trading plan. And when we see price action combinations, that provides us with a very strong signal. Uh, it's always important to do our analysis and manage our risk. Uh, and I would like to have checked them out on the uh, live markets, but unfortunately, we've, we've kind of a little bit overrun on time today and stuff. So I was trying to share as much as I possibly could with you, OK? But hopefully, there's been plenty in there in terms of good examples we've looked at that effectively you can utilise, you know, in your own trading. So... Be sure to join me next week, okay, Wednesday, 1st of February. Join myself for the next session of Paul's Ultimate Price Action Trading Guide to learn about how to use the weekly chart in our trading. I just showed you there I like to use weekly charts, okay? They can utilize for trading and also utilize for analysis. So what we'll talk about, you know, why is that weekly chart useful? Right? What do we need to be aware of when it comes to the weekly chart and how can we use it in our trading? 
So just you know, remember that's two o'clock Wednesday, 1st of February. That's what we're looking for. Check your inbox for the webinar link or be sure to sign up on the website. If you've got any questions or queries or comments, you can get in touch with us there. You can see global at okay, is the uh, email. Or as I said, these videos are right, available on the Admiral's a YouTube channel and Facebook page as well. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. As I said, unfortunately, we've run out a little bit of time. We've overrun a little bit of time for when you're having fun. And as I said, I was just trying to push as much as I possibly can in terms of identifying price action triggers and then seeing how they operate as combinations, whether it be a one candle combo where you get several coming in together in one candle, a two candle combo, something like an inside bar and a pin bar, or a three candle combo where you might get an engulfing candle, a pin bar, an inside bar all coming together. As I said, they don't happen very often, but when they do, and when you see them happening at particular levels of support and resistance, they're very significant, you know, and they are well worth sort of setting up and taking notice of uh, for your trading, ladies and gentlemen. So um, I hope you found that uh, session useful. I hope that's given you a little bit of insight that you can take away and utilize on your own trading. There'll be uh, yeah, probably a feedback form that will come through afterwards here, okay, if you'd be kind enough just taking a minute just to fill it in. If there's any comments or thoughts you have or any ideas you'd like me to cover in future sessions, would gladly uh, hear them. Uh, and until that time, okay, I'd uh, just leave for me to say that I wish you the very best of success in your own trading endeavors, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great trading week, and I'll speak to you soon. Many thanks. <laughs>